Bailey's word was enough to convince the world of March. The only game he was unable to win was against the illness which took him age 68. But his legacy remains, and always will, indelible, eternal. His career, of a quality only within reach of true genius, of a brilliant mind capable of imagining what to the rest of us seemed impossible. But Johan Cruyff didn't just gift us with unforgettable afternoons of football. Even without his special character, he would have been considered an artist of the beautiful game. But the Flying Dutchman was more than that. His revolutionary momentum made him an innovator, surprising and convincing even the unbelievers that his way was the right way. And his way made him a genius, and since his passing, a legend. When Hendrik Johannes Cruyff was born on the 25th of April 1947 in Amsterdam, the first line had been written in a book full of chapters of brilliance. The early chapters tell of his love for the ball and for his local team, Ajax, who took charge of him age 10 and began to shape and mould his remarkable innate talent. Under the watchful eye of Rhinus Mitchells, he turned professional. His first decade in the game was magnificent, as he won 15 titles, including three European Cups. In 1971, he won his first Ballon d'Or. In 1974, the Ajax Board of Directors negotiated his transfer to Real Madrid, but Cruyff's rebellious character led him instead to football club Barcelona, for what was at the time the world's biggest ever transfer fee. The impact of his arrival was immediate. He joined the side lying second to bottom of the Liga table, and which, with him involved, ended the season as champions, a title which Barcelona hadn't won for 14 barren years. That same year, Cruyff participated in a milestone that wouldn't be bettered until 2010, when, on the 17th of February 1974, he led Barcelona to a 5-0 win over Real in the Santiago Bernabeu. Joan Cruyff made 183 official appearances with Barcelona, winning one Liga and one Copa del Rey, and winning the Ballon d'Or on two further occasions. But even more than the titles and statistics, it was the way he understood and played the game that seduced the masses, making the game look easy and leaving images which have become eternal to all true lovers of football. His superlative football clearly came from a privileged mind and it was assumed that his next step would be into the dugout. Destiny and his love of the city meant that he would return to the Camp Nou as manager of football club Barcelona. In 1988, Josep Luis Núñez, club president at the time, offered him total control of the first-team squad. At the beginning of the 1990s, four Ligas, one Copa del Rey, three Spanish Supercopas, one European Cup and one European Super Cup added greatly to the museum in the Camp Nou. But it was Cruyff's idea of how football should be played that was to prove his true and lasting legacy. Cruyff's total football, based on control and possession, deadly when close to the rival area, overcame all other systems. Whoever the rival, wherever the game was played, and whatever the circumstances, his theories were law. A patented style of play, which was the patrimony of Barcelona and his dream team, but also of the world of football and sport in general. he understood life and sport had a galvanizing effect on Spanish football. 
His team thrilled the fans and put into practice perfectly what he transmitted to them on the blackboard. And his blackboard changed the future of the Spanish game forever. Until his arrival, the panorama in Spanish football had been dominated by Real Madrid, the same team which suffered the tyranny of Joan Cruyff's Barcelona. As coach, Cruyff turned things around, eliminating in the process the traditional inferiority complex of the Catalans, who went on to enjoy some of the biggest wins in the history of Spanish football's Clásico. With another Barcelona-Real Madrid just around the corner, the 14th minute of that game will be something very special. Young and old alike will have in their mind's eye the image of the skinny Dutchman, who from the pitch and then from the bench fed the dreams of all those of us who still believe that anything is possible. Mm -hmm.